special counsel Jack Smith is asking a federal judge to reject Donald Trump's proposed changes to a protective order. Prosecutors requested the order in the January 6th case to prevent Trump from posting potentially sensitive case information online. Trump's defense attorneys opposed the request, saying the proposal is, quote, overboard. CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa has the latest. In a filing tonight, Trump's lawyers push back against prosecutors and their request to limit what the former president can say, arguing it is, in effect, asking the court to censor his political speech. The request from federal prosecutors came as Trump's attacks against special counsel Jack Smith are now standard on the campaign trail. He's a deranged human being. Those indictments aren't worth the paper they're written on. And his social media outbursts, including writing, if you go after me, I'm coming after you, prompted prosecutors to act, alarmed about the possibility that Trump could divulge sensitive information or even evidence in the case. I think the former president's most recent comments really reinforced the government's concern that the former president is not a defendant who sits and ruminates in silence. Trump lawyer John Loro said Trump can speak out on free speech grounds. We're going to file on First Amendment grounds on the fact that President Trump is immune as president from, from being prosecuted in this way. Trump's political opponents are stepping up their attacks. Of course he lost. Uh, Trump lost the 2020 of, election. Of course. Okay. Uh, Joe Biden's the president. But the court battles are doing little to diminish Trump's popularity in the Republican primary race. According to a CBS News poll, most Republicans think the indictments are an attempt to stop Trump's campaign. I consider it a great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you. And Robert Costa joins us now. Um, Bob, Trump has said a lot about this case, calling it to be dismissed, calling for the judge to recuse herself, among other things. Does his legal team uh, share the same sentiments? It's great to be with you, Jeff. Uh, former President Trump's legal team is trying to set up a strategy of delay at this point, and they have shared his sentiments to some extent. Uh, they've pushed to have this case moved out of Washington. In fact, they'd like to see it in ruby red West Virginia nearby, uh, not too far from the district, because they believe they would get a more fair hearing in that state versus being in the District of Columbia. But when it comes to asking the judge to recuse herself, Judge Tanya Chutkin, uh, you haven't seen a full-scale echoing of that sentiment by Trump's lawyers. At this point, they continue to underscore that they believe Trump has First Amendment rights, free speech rights, to speak out about this case as a federal candidate for the presidency, and they're going to keep fighting that in court and filing after filing. Uh, Bob, the Iowa State Fair starts this week, uh, a watering hole for GOP hopefuls. Uh, will the ongoing Trump legal cases, is, is, it's, this is very interesting to watch. Is this a subject that candidates avoid or do they address this head on? They don't address it head on. They're trying to stick to their own campaigns, their own messages, but they're frequently asked about it by reporters on the campaign trail. And the issue hovers over the Republican presidential race. Usually the Iowa State Fair is a moment where many of the conservative contenders in the Republican race will debut themselves to voters who are just starting to pay attention to caucus goers in Iowa. But because of these indictments, three of them already, two of them at the federal level, one in New York, one looming at the state level in Georgia in the coming weeks once a charging decision is announced there, it means the Republican presidential race has become a legal story as much as a political story. And while uh, these other contenders are trying to make their own uh, campaign pitches uh, front and center, in the national discussion, uh, they know that sometimes the only way they're going to get traction uh, in this frenzied news cycle is to respond to the latest on the former president. You mentioned Georgia there. We'll ask Caitlin about this too later. But uh, as far as Georgia and the timeline goes and when that fourth indictment comes down, what, what are you hearing? Within days, probably by mid-August, we'll have a very f firm idea of what Fonnie Willis, the district attorney in Fulton County, the Atlanta area, has decided to do uh, all signs at this point, based on our reporting, our conversations with lawyers and sources close to the investigation, is that she is moving toward an indictment of not only former President Trump, but many of his allies who were part of this alleged pressure campaign of Georgia election officials and the Georgia governor, Republican Brian Kemp. Okay, Bob Costa, thank you very much. Thank you.